Hey girl gang, it's Dr. Joy here and you are watching Delivering Joy MD. So we have been going through our Super Mama Summer series and today we are at second trimester of pregnancy. So today I'm gonna be giving you all the game about the second trimester and just giving you some anticipatory guidance and letting you know what to expect. So make sure you keep watching. <laughs> All right, girl gang, so let's break down the second trimester. So welcome to the glow phase. Second trimester is usually so much better than first trimester. And if you remember on our last episode, we talked about how first trimester pretty much just like sucks. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but pretty much it just sucks. So second trimester is like the ah, trimester of pregnancy. So this is the time when most women report that they feel the best. Um, this is when most of the nausea and vomiting has resolved, energy level has gone up. Um, it's the time for the bump watch. So, you know, a lot of women start showing during this time and it's just super cute. And so second trimester is kind of that time where everything's going pretty well. Um, now in terms of some of the things to think about, uh, for a second trimester that may not be the funnest, is that a word? funnest, uh, most fun, I think maybe might be more correct. Um, but is the things that aren't the most pleasant are going to be things like round ligament pain, which is that pulling throbbing sensation that can be in the groin and sometimes even shooting down into the vagina. Uh, that is really just from the round ligaments which hold the uterus in the pelvis. And the uterus is trying to grow and expand with this new baby that's forming. And the round ligaments are like, no, stay down here. Stay in the pelvis with us. And so they're kind of tugging, trying to tug the uterus back down. And so that pulling pain is really kind of like a tug of war going on in there. And then in addition, now that the baby is bigger and starts to has more weight, um, uh, you know, heavier and starting to uh, move a lot more, the uterus is kind of being toggled right and left and front and back. And so that those ligaments really take a beating. And so a lot of women can feel a lot of pain or pressure down around those round ligaments and sometimes even tender to touch. So um, that's very normal in pregnancy. Another thing that we have to think about is back pain. Back pain happens usually in the lower back at that joint where the hips and the spine meet. That's called the sacroiliac joint that we call the SI joint for short, is where a lot of women get their pain. Um, that joint is actually beginning to stretch a little bit. So in second trimester, we're producing this hormone called relaxin that causes the joints to uh, relax. And that's really in anticipation of the hips actually needing to be more flexible for the baby to come through the birth canal. So that joint often gets inflamed that sacroiliac joint gets inflamed and you get what's called sacroiliitis and that can be really uncomfortable and so one of the things that i always tell my girl gang about is belly belts so those belts that kind of hold the uterus in place and kind of support the low back are really helpful especially on days when you know you're going to be busy and like moving around a lot walking all day you definitely want to get a belly belt to just kind of help stabilize the pelvis and the low back and give you some relief so um, speaking of low back, we also hear a lot of women talking about uh, sharp shooting pains going down the back of their leg. That is a condition called sciatica of pregnancy and it's actually very common and really um, the cause of it is that normally the pregnant uterus is sitting um, close to the nerve root um, to the big nerves in the pelvis that form the sciatic nerve that runs down your buttock in the back of your leg and so that pain can be like serious I mean I've seen some women really like you know nearly in tears from sciatica and unfortunately we really have to rely on like physical therapy and Tylenol and you know just doing uh, comfort measures because there's not a whole lot that we can do with sciatica in pregnancy um, in terms of like you know treating women with nerve pain medication. So, uh, you know, in some severe cases, we may go ahead and treat a woman if we feel like her quality of life is being impacted, but generally we try to avoid those medications in pregnancy. In terms of um, 
the 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 round ligament pain and sciatica and back pain those are things that are usually uh, very common in pregnancy and definitely nothing to worry about unless you're having some severe symptoms and if you are then you definitely want to talk to your ob provider about that one of the other things a lot of women comment on is dizziness and so um, one thing i like to really explain is that during the second trimester the amount of fluid in your blood almost doubles so we all have our blood and I always like to compare blood to Kool-Aid and so I tell my patients that like okay so you take your Kool-Aid mix you've got a good bit of that you've got some sugar and then you've got water right and you're gonna mix all that together to make your Kool-Aid and get the perfect combination so that your Kool-Aid tastes just right well same thing with your blood you have red blood cells which would be like your red Kool-Aid mix you have white blood cells like your sugar and then you have plasma, uh, which is like the water. So your blood plasma levels really drastically increase uh, during pregnancy. And so it kind of is similar to someone pouring an extra pitcher of water in your perfect Kool-Aid that you just made. So it really dilutes it down. The brain doesn't really like this. It keeps the brain from really feeling like it's getting adequate oxygen, even though it is. You still have the same number, pretty much, of red blood cells that you did before. You just have a ton more water. And so the blood seems thinner to the brain and the brain is always sampling the blood. And if the blood seems thinner, uh, women may feel dizzy, they may feel lightheaded. A lot of times they may get nauseated or feel like they're hot and sweaty and clammy. And they always say, I felt like I was gonna pass out. You Usually they don't pass out. Occasionally they, they can. If you feel like you're going to pass out, sit down first. Okay. Make sure you sit down. And then if that feeling doesn't pass in say a couple of minutes, then lie down on your left side. And that should help really promote blood return to the heart. When we're pregnant, um, the big blood vessels inside the pelvis that form this huge vein called the inferior vena cava or IVC, uh, the, the uterus kind of pushes on those veins and it keeps blood from getting from the lower part of the body back up to the heart. And so that's another reason where why women might feel dizzy or lightheaded, um, nauseous or hot. So I always say lay down on your left side and allow that blood to get back up to the heart and pumped to the rest of the body and that usually causes it to go away. If you find that you actually did pass out, that's something you wanna to talk to your OB about because there can also be warning signs about heart disease um, when women are passing out or about neurologic or brain disease. Key complaint that I hear a lot in second trimester that I start to hear is heartburn as well. So if you're having heartburn, a few things you need to do definitely cut out those spicy foods, okay? Try to really have more of a bland diet. Cut out greasy foods or fried foods um, because those all promote more acid to be produced by the stomach and cut out acidic foods, right? So you don't wanna add acid to acid. So those are your things like tomato sauce, hot sauce, um, pineapple, citric acid. So all of those things can really increase your heartburn tremendously. It is totally okay to take Tums or Rolaids over the counter during pregnancy. And if you find that these are not really helping, if you're popping them like candy, then you should talk to your OB provider about maybe starting some protonics or uh, Nexium or something like that to help keep the acid production down. One patient told me that if you take a teaspoon of mustard that it seems to help, like just regular yellow mustard. I've not tried it, but hey, never know. I learn lots of things from patients every day. So um, those are just kind of the some of the unpleasant points of second trimester, but all definitely doable. And you're starting to really feel yourself. And a lot of women will just look so good. Their hair is growing, their skin is glowing, and it's just such a wonderful time. So in terms of things that we want to hit uh, as far as prenatal care milestones, um, we definitely want to get what's called the quad screen or that AFP or alpha fetal protein test. That is a, a test that tests for potential problems with the baby's brain or spinal cord development. We're gonna get that between week 15 and week 21. 
Did you know that any pregnant woman can actually become diabetic? So it's crazy, right? The placenta makes these hormones that make your body re resistant to insulin, just like a type two diabetic. So that um, is something that we screen every pregnant woman for. We have you drink this I don't know. It's like a it's like a drink and it's 50 grams of sugar in this drink. It's like super sweet. It tastes kind of like a flat sun kissed. Uh, but we have you drink that within five minutes and then wait one hour. And then we test your blood sugar levels to see how your body um, actually clears out all that sugar we gave you. And hopefully your level is going to come back less than 140 um, or less than 130. For some folks, they use a 130 cutoff. And for some folks, they use a 140 cutoff. But either way, the goal is to screen to make sure that you don't um, have higher blood sugar levels after having that sugar load. So if your blood sugar comes back and it looks um, normal, then you're good to go. If your sugar level comes back and it's higher than that 130 to 140 mark, then you're going to be asked to do what's called a confirmation test. And that's a three hour glucose test in order to diagnose you with gestational diabetes or diabetes in pregnancy. Well, you really wanna know if you're diabetic in pregnancy. And so I always offer my patients the option, like if you just know like this three hours ain't gonna cut it, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Well, I just offer them the option to start monitoring their blood sugar and do diabetic testing and just be treated like a gestational diabetic. And if we, you know, are able to review their blood sugars over, you know, several weeks, it's very easy to tell who's definitely diabetic and who's and who probably isn't. That's an option you can talk to your OB provider about as well. If you um, have tried to have your one hour glucose uh, challenge test and you just have not been able to keep it down, you've been vomiting it up or, or whatever, ask for a prescription for some anti-nausea medicine and take that 30 minutes before the test to see if you can tolerate the test. If you still can't tolerate it, there are some other methods out there like the um, jelly bean method where we have you eat a certain number of specific flavored jelly beans and then test your blood sugar one hour after that. So, you know, whatever you need to do, but figure out whether or not you are diabetic in pregnancy because diabetes can certainly lead to some really serious problems um, during the pregnancy for both the mom and the baby. So make sure you know your status. All right, and so uh, another um, thing that's really important to think about in late second trimester is your Rogam injection. If you are A negative, B negative, AB negative, or O negative blood type, you need an injection called Rogam. The Rogam help, helps to protect your next baby from antibodies that you might make to the blood of the baby that you're currently pregnant with. I know that sounds super confusing because I remember the first time I heard it and I was like, what? But basically what it is, is if your baby is RH positive, the one that's in, that's in the uterus now is RH positive, then you are gonna share some blood with that baby. And some of that baby's RH positive blood is going to start circulating within your bloodstream. And when your body recognizes this, it's like, oh wait, what is this RH positive blood doing here? We need to make some antibodies to get rid of it. So your body starts making antibodies to fight off the proteins from that RH positive blood. And so usually your immune system doesn't get ramped up enough to affect the current pregnancy. But if you were to get pregnant again and have another RH positive baby, basically your immune system is going to like attack this baby's red blood cells. So it can be absolutely detrimental. It can cause all kinds of fetal anemia and even fetal death. So you want to make sure you get that Rogam between 28 and 29 weeks, right at the start of third trimester. The other thing that I also start talking to women about in second trimester is the Tdap vaccine. That's tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. And that um, is the whooping cough. So if you've ever heard of whooping cough, it's it's something that's usually pretty mild in adults, but can be devastating in kids. Go ahead and get that between 28 and 36 weeks. So go ahead and schedule that into your prenatal plan. Start thinking about it, reading up on it, um, asking about it so that you make sure you have that protection available to your baby. And I also recommend that dads get it and any you know other folks who are going to be living in the house who are going to take an active role in 
and taking care of that baby. So as we come to the end of second trimester, I'm always encouraging women to start thinking about uh, what their birth plan is gonna be. Think about whether or not you want to have an induction of labor versus going into spontaneous labor. Thinking about uh, whether or not you want pain control during your labor. Are you gonna have an epidural or are you going to um, you know, have an unmedicated birth or do you just want IV medications? So these are all things to kind of start really researching and exploring. Um, I recommend going to, um, you know, credible sources so like looking for scholarly information on these things versus just googling them because you'll run into a lot of people's horror stories that you just really are going to wish that you had not read so um there are the baby center does a really great job with kind of helping you coordinate and plan out um, there are other sites that i will post in the description box below that are very credible that you can use to kind of start thinking about birth plans and in terms of you know planning for your birth birth, if you've had a previous baby and had a C-section, um, this might also be a great time to start talking about whether or not you plan to do a trial of labor after C-section um, and have a vaginal birth after cesarean or whether or not you want to have a repeat C-section. And so there are lots of um, nuances and caveats to those things. And so that's a conversation you really want to have with your OBGYN. And I would have it sooner rather than later so that you're kind of planning uh, for that. I say it's good to plan ahead so that you kind of know in your head where you're going. And then it's also good to be flexible, to you know not be married to that because you don't know how things are going to turn out. Um, and I remember like one of my best friends was wanting to have an unmedicated water birth and you know she had all these things in mind for her birth and then she ended up having to deliver prematurely because she got um, hypertension and pregnancy and she was pretty sick and so she ended up being hooked to this IV pole and it was just all this stuff that was going on and she was just so bummed about it but I'm like you know at least she had a plan she had what she wanted in her head but she was able to be flexible and navigate that whole change of plan too and she still had an unmedicated birth. You had her hypnobirthing techniques and she did great. So if you're interested in something like that, that is not the thing that you want to just like pop in and say, okay, yeah, now I'm in labor. So I'm going to, you know, just have a natural birth. No, it takes some research. It takes some practice. It takes some um, education on how to really deal with labor pains. Because let me tell you something, girl, labor is a whole nother kind of pain. Okay. There are, you know, Women say, oh, I have high pain tolerance. No, labor is something new. So you really have to plan how you're going to manage those contractions and what you're going to do in terms of pushing. You need a good labor coach who can keep you motivated and encouraged. So these are these are things that you want to uh, be paying attention to as you end the second trimester. The other thing I talk about a lot um, is, you know, making sure that you are thinking about birth control options. So usually during the one hour glucose test, that's between 26 and 28 weeks, we go ahead and give out some information on birth control. So you can start kind of at least having it on your radar, thinking about it. What are we going to do? Are we done with our family? Thinking about your reproductive life plan, a one year break, two year break, five year break in between babies. Like, how are we going to do this? So lots of things that we, um, do in second trimester like have our anatomy ultrasound and that anatomy ultrasound tells us all about our baby's body parts and of course we can confirm the sex because in our office we actually are doing the non-invasive prenatal testing which does all of the genetic screening up um, in the first trimester and so we know whether it's a boy or a girl everyone always loves to see those pictures of the boy parts or the girl parts and we do that during the 20 week anatomy 20 week anatomy ultrasound so most women are going to be um, getting that ultrasound between 20 and 22 weeks for my higher risk moms i usually send them to see the maternal fetal medicine specialist that we talked about in one of our previous episodes so that they can get a detailed anatomy scan and we may do that between 18 and 20 weeks so you know just kind of depending on your own unique need so those are just all kind of the prenatal care milestones that we hit during second trimester in terms of your visits you're still coming every four weeks and you are starting to get what's called a fundal height measurement and the fundal height is really measuring from the pubic bone up to the top of your uterus. And so after 20 weeks, that 
measurement should correlate with the number of weeks you are. So if you're 22 weeks, then you should be around a 22 centimeter fundal height. And you are allowed a little wiggle room. So if you were 22 weeks, you could be between 20 and 24. So you get plus or minus two. So you can have two centimeters up or two centimeters down. Anything more than that can indicate that we have a problem going on with baby's growth. And we'll start to do ultrasounds to monitor that growth. So uh, if you are 22 weeks and you are you're 26 centimeters then we're worried about excessive fetal growth if you're 22 weeks and you're 18 centimeters on your fundal height then we're worried that the baby that the baby may not be growing well so that's just kind of something that's happening during the appointments the appointments may seem like you know there's nothing really to them you're just coming in getting measured but that measurement is super important because that is how we um, detect any um growth problems in the baby. And then we're also able to listen to the heart rate with a fetal Doppler, which most people really love to hear. I even love hearing it. Like I've been doing this for, I don't know, 11 years now, and I still love hearing that heartbeat. So you're able to hear that. I have a lot of moms that record it. And now that we're in this crazy COVID situation and you know we can't have other visitors in the office, a lot of times dads will FaceTime and try to hear that heart rate. So um, I think that um, that's kind of like the, the fun part of pregnancy uh, during second trimester is to get to see your baby on ultrasound, getting to hear that heartbeat, getting measured. So these are all things that are going on during your prenatal care and second trimester. So. I hope you enjoyed this video on second trimester care. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comments below. So we will see you next time, girl gang, for our Super Mama Summer series. We'll continue with third trimester. See you soon. Peace. See you soon, girl gang. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below.